questions that address some exceptionally serious problems in the healthcare system. But have you had any commitment from government that these will actually be implemented? Well, thank you very much for that. Um, we know that there will be a statement in Parliament uh, tomorrow, and uh, we will be examining that very, very carefully, because this whole thing will be a total waste of time. We don't want our report to sit on the shelf. We think it really, really important, as you have said, Sophie, that it should be implemented. And of course, we will bring together all sorts of people uh, who also want that to happen. But our term of office finishes at the end of July. And so it is about people bringing together, especially patient groups who have been so fantastic. Uh, and I'm sure they will want to see this report implemented in full. So our next one is um, Emily Morgan from ITV News. Um, Emily, are you around? Yes, I am. Emily Morgan from ITV News. Hello. Uh, you've been hugely critical of the services overall offered to people affected. But I wonder why you decided not to name individual clinicians who are still prescribing valparate to pregnant women or who are still fitting pelvic mesh knowing uh, the, the dangers associated with it and not passing that information on. Is that in the public interest? Well, we were asked not to name individuals. We were trying to look at the whole of the healthcare system as it worked. And we have heard a lot from uh, individual patients, their concerns about individual surgeons. And what we have done is pass it on to the regulators, the GMC and others, uh, because it wasn't our role to investigate individuals. It was to look at the whole system. And that was a, in our terms of reference. May, may I ask a follow up? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I just wonder also why perhaps you didn't recommend banning pelvic mesh surgery altogether. Well, I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask first of all, um, Cyril, whether he would like to answer that. Um, but certainly we have said that uh, we, well, we were so concerned about what was happening, as you know, that we did call a halt to what was happening. And then doctors have been telling us about individual cases of great, great suffering. People who've had cancer and things like that, uh, and in those cases, it might be necessary. They might have a very short time to live anyhow because of their condition. Uh, and this might just relieve some of the pain that they're suffering at the moment. But Cyril is a very, very distinguished physician. And Cyril knows a lot of surgeons. He knows the health service inside out. And Cyril, would you like to come in? Uh, yes, but he's not a surgeon. and. Uh... And I wouldn't second guess uh, surgeons who are uh, doing the right thing in the right way. We want to make sure that the wrong thing in the wrong way isn't done. There are some cases, for instance, with rectal prolapse, where we have been advised there may be no better alternative. But it shouldn't be undertaken lightly. It should be done properly and with proper multidisciplinary routine. And it should be rare. And uh, we have no doubt that if our recommendations are followed, that will be the case. But I don't think it'd be right to have a complete ban that certainly is never going to be the same in the future as it was in the past. And can I just add on that? Thank you, Cyril. Uh, what I can add on that is that um, the numbers we expect to be absolutely tiny. But before but the women really need to have all the risks explained to them. They need to know the options that are available. And we think that mesh, if ever it's implanted again, it should really be absolutely certain that all the other things that can be explored first, things like physiotherapy, uh, body weight, all sorts of the other issues should be considered first before that decision is made, because we know there are other options, uh, and that is really important. 
Thank you. Um, shall we go on then to Jason Farrell? Yes, I hope you can hear me, Baroness. Uh, yeah. Congratulations on your review. I have two questions, and the first one is this. You say that the manufacturer has a moral responsibility to pay for the care of the patients along with the government. The manufacturer of, of Primados, Bayer, uh, that took over Shearing, says that they don't have a moral responsibility. They do not feel that there is enough available evidence to prove a uh, causational link between the drug and malformations. What do you say to them? Well, I'll tell you what I would say, Jason, and thank you for all the work you've been doing on this. What I would say is I'm going to ask Valerie Brass if she would like to answer this, because we've had a lot of communication with Sherry. And of course, it's a historic thing that we're trying to look at. But I'm just wondering, Valerie, I know you've been involved with a lot of the uh, toing and throwing that we've had with sharing, and would you like to come in? I mean, we've certainly had discussions with the manufacturers, but I think we're very clear from what our report says that there has been avoidable harm. In the case of Primados, we talk about psychological avoidable harm from a, a, a tablet that was produced by Shearing, now owned by Bearing. Bear, sorry, and on that basis alone, there is this moral and ethical responsibility to contribute to make amends. Um, I feel I've been really neglecting my team who have been so fantastic. So I should just. Can I, take, can I follow up on a question? I'm just going to introduce my team and then you can have the next question, Joseph. But first of all, Valerie Brass is our secretary and she has been just so amazing through all this, and um, is a joint author of the report. Um, many of you will know Simon Whale, who has been our chief communicator, and uh, looked after all our um, press and other, other issues, and has been a member of the three um, from uh, the panel who have made the decisions. And Cyril's already spoken, and so Cyril Chancellor is the vice chairman of the new and then um, Sonia McLeod uh, uh, over there, who um, is our chief researcher. So I should have done that at the beginning. Um, Jason, you've got another question. Yes, you said that criminals should have been taken off the market in 1967. You'll remember perhaps some of the evidence that we gave that um, in 1967, a doctor, Isabel Gall, a paediatrician, came out with this report and was later described um, by some of the regulators as a pathetic little woman. Um, the, it strikes me that quite a lot of, well, all of these uh, products and medicines affect women. Do you think... Well, it's that Jason Farrell uh, continuing uh, to pursue uh, his investigations on behalf uh, of the victims of the drug criminals. A lot happening. We're going live now to the House of Commons. Uh, Rishi Sunak will be making his statement uh, shortly, but right now the Prime Minister uh, is answering questions. Billion pound grant that's been given to support our theatres and performing artists. But are we going to see any of it at all outside of the West End and here in Lichfield? Minister, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, can, I, I thank my right honourable I can tell him that uh, Lichfield has been at the centre of our cultural life uh, since Dr. Johnson and uh, David Garrick made their famous walk and ride uh, from Lichfield to to London in the, in the 18th century and will continue uh, to be so and we are working closely with Arts Council England to support and develop the projects that I know are so dear to his heart. Is that the Leader of the Opposition with the Right Honourable Keir Starmer? Yeah. Thank you Mr Speaker. On Monday when asked why care home deaths had been so high, the Prime Minister said and I quote, too many care homes didn't really follow the procedures in the way that they could have. That's caused huge offence to frontline care workers. It's now been 48 hours. Will the Prime Minister apologise?